Okay. Um, I'll start by taking questions. I don't know exactly where you want me to to go, so I'll, I'll kind of let you guys go. We just met yesterday. Coach, I can think of a few uh, upperclassmen that you might have had to send to the demo squads for uh, for the opening week. How do you handle that conversation? That's different, of course, than talking to the freshmen about it. Yeah, you know, those are all things that you know within your your football program that, that you you do face to face. You know, just throw up a. You know, the days are just throwing the names up on the board and saying, hey, that's where you go. Everybody's got a role. Um, some guys get are disappointed. Uh, but they're, they're, they all know that in this program, if they continue to improve, um, they're never buried. They always have an opportunity. Coach, how have you divided up the reps now that Dane's the number one and, and you're moving forward and trying to get your three and four guys? 60-40. 60-40, Dane and, and Tommy, in terms of the reps. And then... You know the the young guys will get some uh, some team reps, but they they generally won't get you know ones versus one reps or twos versus two. So it's about a 60-40 split is generally what I try to stick to. Brian, a lot of the younger outside linebackers you have are six five, six six, six seven. Then you got Prince who's six two and is yeah. from all indications is tearing it up. What is he doing? That's so good, and why is he effective at that size? Well, we really weren't sure, to be quite honest with you. He was recruited here uh, by, um, you know, the the former staff, and and so he was an inside backer, and we saw, you know, some great athletic ability. So he's not in profile, but he has other qualities that that make him an effective player. He, he plays, uh, you know, obviously very uh, strong at the point of attack. He's great in pass rush. So even though he's 6'2", he has some other traits that no one would have been able to guess by the position he plays. We would prefer to be longer uh, at that position, and we are with some of the younger kids, but he just has, he would be good if we played him, you know, really a number of different positions, quite frankly. Brian, aside from Robbie, your second line receivers, has anybody kind of distinguished themselves over the last three weeks? Uh, the last couple of days, John Goodman has. Um, he, uh, you know, he, John has been an enigma in a sense that, you know, he's got a lot of athletic ability and he shows real big flashes. And we had a one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, meeting a couple of days ago about consistency. And he's shown some, if he can give us the consistent performance that he's capable of athletically, then add him to the list. Uh, and Daniels gets better every day. So, you know, you're talking about TJ, you're talking about, um, you know, Goodman being a swing guy, um, Robbie, and then, and obviously Danny Smith has got to get back to being into the flow of things. But really, quite frankly, it's, it's between Goodman and him as to who gets that yeah. next shot. If being consistent was easy, obviously everyone would do sure. it. So what do you think was stopping John from, from doing that? Boy, you know, I, I just think, you know, when you look at John, he's uh, sometimes he has to be more of a split personality. He, he, carries, he carries himself sometimes, um, you know, in, in a manner that I, I would like to see a little bit more tenacious. I'd like to see him a little bit more aggressive than anything he does. And he's getting there. You know, again, this is kind of similar to what we were talking about Dane, you know, yesterday. You know, John's the same way. He's just got to continue to be on the practice field. Um, uh, he's just got to have that, I don't know, that, that toughness that I'm looking for. And he's getting there. He really is. Right. Harrison almost doubled his career interception total down the stretch run last year. And it's one thing to have a solid guy back there. When you have a guy who's making plays and dynamically in the back end, how does that enhance uh, defense, your defense? Pre-snap uh, reads can now be tweaked quite a bit. In other words, you can start doing some things and moving some safeties around. And, you know, you can, you can do so much within your game plan. When you're still trying to just get comfortable back there, uh, just be, you know, competent, then you can't do a lot of things that you want to do. We're, we're able to do so much more now that he has confidence in his ability. We can do a lot more in the back end of our defense. How much has he grown as a leader? Uh, obviously, being your captain, um, how much does it help having a guy like that anchoring your defense? Well, he, he always walked the talk. I mean, he, he always, even my first couple of days here, he was, 
he had leadership qualities, but y you know, you still have to do it on the field to get everybody's attention. You know, it's still uh, a guy that that had to go out there and perform. Once he started making plays, got confidence, uh, he he got everybody on his bandwagon as well. Ryan Gary Gray is one of those veteran sort of battle scarred type of guys. What are your expectations for him? I think he's one of the better corners in the country, and I think we expect him to play that way. You know, at this time last year, Gary Gray was not considered in, in that realm. Uh, he's had, you know, obviously last year he had a very, very good year for us. We want to see him pick up from where he left off and, and maybe even expand that uh, to the next level. So uh, we, we have high expectations, and he does too. Um, you know, he got the gold ball today for, for ball disruptions, and. You know, he's going against Mike Floyd, you know, so that's two very good players competing uh, out on the practice field. So uh, we, we should and, and uh, we do have high expectations. What's Mike done? His first couple of years, obviously, he played like half the time was injured, whether it's bad luck or, or whatever. What has he done to sort of, I don't prehab things almost, be more preventative and, and, and be able to stay out of the field like he was pretty much last year? Well, I, I think uh, first he's taking care of his body. You know, he's, um, he's eating right, doing the right things off the field. And I don't think if you're taking care of yourself, you, you're going to put yourself in harm's way. So I think that's the first thing. Uh, the other thing is he's become accustomed more now with our weight training and conditioning, which is a year-round program, so it's strengthening him a lot more. Um, I don't know if you, uh, that's not going to really help you if you break your collarbone or something like that, but, you know, muscular injuries, I, I think it's, he's taking care of himself. Coach, does having some of the positions settled like quarterback, does it make practice easier just because you're not looking to see who that guy is? Or were you guys not spending as much time on it as maybe we thought? No, I thought the, the chase for the quarterback position was fun too. It's all, it's just now we're, we're focused differently. I don't know if it's harder or easier, but we're focused on South Florida. We're focused on some more situational things that we needed to script and rehearse that could happen in the first game. Uh, so I, I wouldn't characterize it as harder or easier. It's just a different focus now that the quarterback has been defined. Brian, you were talking yesterday about the freshman running backs. How much do you enlist Sears help with them? And if you do, how? How was he with those guys? You know, uh, I wouldn't have said that Sear was going to be a very good teacher yeah. of things, but he's been really good with the young guys. He really has. I, uh, I could just go back to today where he helped on a couple of reads and pass protection. So he's been good. And Jonas has been really good. They have done everything because they know that they need those two guys. Mm -hmm. You know, So they've been really good in teaching the two young backs to, to kind of get them up to speed. Is that 60-40 split at quarterback, is that typical with you for first team, second team, or is, is it divided more evenly because Tommy Reese is, is closer in the competition? Is that typical? For me, it is. Yeah. I think it's atypical for most uh, that I know of and coaches that I talk to, and uh, they like to be more towards 80-20. Uh, I've always been 60-40 because I've always felt that um, you can do some teaching with those repeated reps, those next four. If they repeat some of the first, you can talk to your quarterback and say, Take a look at it now from this perspective. Mm -hmm. That's the play you just didn't read correctly. So I've always used it as a teaching opportunity. So maybe it's only 6-4, but he's really getting the mental reps as well. So that's just been my style. And will you alternate or will you um, differentiate? Will you, will I am you, struggling listen, here. I don't know. Being lost for words? I know. <laughs> that's like me. Will you, will you alter, alter? There we go. That's where. Will you alter that depending upon the situation between the two quarterbacks? Or it's, or you just follow that pretty, that's a pretty hard and fast rule. Yeah, I think there have been times later in the week, a game preparation, let's say we get to a Thursday. I, I have, if I don't feel like you are executing some of the things in the game plan, I will up your reps to make sure that we've got those plays down. But as a normal rule, we're, stay, we're staying 60-40 unless I feel like you need more work on a particular play. That'll be the last time I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> sure it is. I heard on the radio right. on the way in that uh, Rob Henry, the quarterback at Purdue, is injured and maybe lost for the season. Do you find those things out, or have you heard anything about that? Uh, Brian Harden mentioned it to me on the way in because he expected a question. Um, you know, obviously those are difficult things to, to have to go through um, injuries in this game. But, you know, we've had our share. You know, I feel bad for, for obviously the young man. He's, he's a kid that obviously was going to give an opportunity to be a starter. So, uh, but, uh, you know, we all got to fight through those things. Brian, to your right. Yeah. Seats. Yes. Um, injuries, uh, Elston was talking yesterday about having to hold out when our 
a couple times, and, and that's when I really fought him on it. I mean, how that's good to see you want guys to be tough, but how important is the communication with the guys and the staff on on how they're really feeling, especially with all the injuries last year? Starts in the training room. Trust with your trainers. So you're not getting – see, here's what happens. They tell the trainer one thing, and then they tell the position coach another. You can't have that. So that goes to trust. And then that goes to the assistant coaches knowing that, hey, you know, if Sean needs a couple of blows here, we got to get him out. And so I think that's all goes into building trust within a program that's operating uh, all on the same page. And, and we are with Sean. And we got to be careful. The kid, the kid broke his foot, and he's got, you know, he's always going to have pain there and soreness. So you just got to be smart in the reps that he gets. Anything else? Great. Great. Thank you.